Awesome. Thank you all for joining me for a 60 minute restorative yoga class. My fully vaccinated mother is visiting from Seattle. So we're going to do some yoga together. Um, for this class, you will want a couple of pillows um, of different sizes, maybe like some pillows, you know, that you use in your bedroom, because we're going to use these to make kind of a yoga bolster without having to have a yoga bolster. So some pillows and some blankets or towels. Um, you don't need anything uh, like fancy yoga props, like a bolster or a block, just household items like some pillows and, uh, and blankets. And we will also get into that later. So um, let's see. So yeah, this is a restorative yoga class. I'm so glad you guys are here. You're going to start by finding yourself in a comfortable seated position. You can sit in Sukhasana or easy pose with one foot in front of the other. And we're just going to start by sitting up nice and tall. You can either have your hands on your lap or maybe have your hands together. If you'd like, you can close your eyes. Feel both of your sit bones firmly rooted into the floor. Take an inhale through your nose and an exhale through your nose. We're going to start with a breathing exercise called I am thank you. So the idea is you inhale through your nose, you'll say to, silently to yourself, I am followed by um, a noun, an adjective or a verb like I am breathing or I am a yogi or I am loved, whatever it is. And then as you exhale through your nose, you'll silently repeat to yourself, thank you. We'll do this for three minutes. It's just a nice way to kind of come into our breath, come into our body. If closing your eyes is super distracting, you can do a soft fuzzy gaze just beyond the tip of your nose. Otherwise, eyes closed, sitting up nice and tall, shoulders down, chest proud, relax your jaw. I'll start us off with three I am um, thank you statements and then I'll just allow us some time to do it together. All right, so sitting up tall, shoulders down, chest up. As you inhale to your nose, silently repeat to yourself, I am practicing yoga. Exhale through your nose, thank you. Inhale through your nose, I am safe in this moment. Exhale through your nose, thank you. Inhale through your nose, I am loved. Exhale through your nose, thank you. And we'll continue with three more minutes of I am, thank you, breathing. Again, inhaling through the nose, I am, and whatever comes to mind. And then exhaling through the nose, thank you. If at any point you notice that um, you're starting to get into negative self-talk or untrue or unfair descriptions of yourself, just note that and then compassionately bring yourself into I am thank you statements that you would say about a dear friend, right? So we're treating ourselves like a beloved friend. Inhaling through the nose, I am, a noun, adjective, or verb of your choice. Exhale through the nose, thank you. you find your mind wandering, just returning to your I am thank you statements as you breathe in and out through the nose.
We'll finish with three more statements together. On your next inhale through the nose, I am a yogi. Exhale through your nose, thank you. Inhale through your nose, I am breathing. Exhale through your nose, thank you. Inhale through your nose, I am relaxed. Exhale through your nose, thank you. Whenever, whenever you're ready, just return your breath to normal in and out through the nose. Take your time, slowly open your eyes, looking straight ahead and sit up nice and tall. It's normal to start to kind of hunch forward when we breathe. Sitting up nice and tall in your Sukhasana easy pose, one foot in front of the other. We're gonna start just by moving the neck. I'm gonna place my hands on my knees, palms facing down. You're also welcome to have your hands on either sides of your, um, of your sit bones on the floor for support. Inhale, stretch the crown of your head up to the ceiling. Exhale, tilt your right ear towards right shoulder, stretching the left side neck. And it's worth noting that I'm not mirroring you, so it might look like I'm moving my head to the left when in fact I'm moving my head to the right. You are welcome to follow my words or my body either way. Just know that we will do the right side of postures first, unless I forget, which sometimes happens. Relax your shoulders and bring your right ear down towards the right shoulder. Good, slowly roll your head down, chin to chest, and then keep rolling, roll left ear towards left shoulder, stretching the right side neck. And right away, you might notice that this side feels a little or a lot different, and that's normal. Uh, we are not symmetrical, right? And nowhere in like ancient Vedic texts does it say that yoga is supposed to make you symmetrical. Yoga is a tool for self-realization and God-realization, self-love and self-compassion. And sometimes our realization and our compassion is just noticing hmm, my right shoulder is tighter than my left shoulder and then being compassionate with ourselves, not like forcing the body or judging it. Slowly roll your head down, chin to chest. Roll your head up, look straight ahead. And then start to look up towards the ceiling. Lift your nose, lift your chin going backwards. Look for the ceiling or even the wall behind you. Keep your eyes open, mouth closed. It might be hard to do deep breaths when you're back bending, even if it's just the neck dropping back. Still little sips of air in and out through the nose. This is compression to the neck spine and extension through the throat. Good, slowly roll your head back to center. Look straight ahead. Inhale, stretch the crown of your head up towards the ceiling. Exhale, relax your head, chin to chest, look down towards the floor. So as you draw your chin towards your chest, keep the shoulders back and down and the chest proud. So it's just the neck spine that's moving. Try not to hunch forward. Lift your chest, gently engage your abdominal wall and then relax your jaw. Drop your head and breathe. It's an extension to the neck spine, compression to the throat. Good, slowly roll your head back up, look straight ahead. Using the breath to connect to the body, inhale, stretch the crown of your head up towards the ceiling. Exhale, look over right shoulder. Now we're twisting the neck. So keep your shoulders and hips pointing forward so it's just the neck spine moving at the beginning of class. We will move the rest of the body as well. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, look over right shoulder. Where eyes go, body knows to follow. Good, slowly, carefully unwind, look straight ahead and we'll do the other side. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, look over left shoulder. The spine moves in six different directions, right, left, backward, forward, twisting to each side. And we will do all of those multiple times today. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, look over left shoulder. And slowly, carefully come back to center, looking straight ahead. Place your right hand outside of um, your right hip on the floor. Inhale, sweep your left arm long overhead. Drop the shoulder, lengthen the arm. You want to feel a gentle stretch to the left side body, never a point of pain. Take a breath, connecting to your breath, using the breath to connect to the body. 
As you're ready, place your left hand on the floor in front of you, getting some motion in the body, sweep your arm, place left hand outside of left thigh, inhale, reach right arm long overhead, exhale, drop right shoulder. So a nice active arm stretching the right side body, never collapsing or forcing. You just want to do go to a point in your postures that feels good to your body. It's honoring where you are today. Good, take your right hand to the floor, sweep your right hand forward, place your left hand on the floor. So now both hands in front, push the floor away from you and drop your head. We bring the shoulders down away from the ears, holding forward a little bit, just getting some motion to the spine. Walk your hands in towards your body and then bring your arms behind you. Stick your butt out a little bit, look up and look back, open through the chest. So now we're stretching the whole front of the body, compressing the back of the body. Good, and slowly, carefully come back to center. Good, inhale, reach your right arm up, stretching right side body. Exhale, place right hand close behind you like a second spine, fingers tented, thumb towards you, fingers towards the wall behind you. Inhale, reach your left arm up, stretching left side body. Exhale, place left hand on right knee. Inhale, lengthen, stretch up. Exhale, look over right shoulder and twist. Drop your shoulders, lift your chest. Notice if you're leaning back or to one side, evenly distribute your body weight on both sit bones so the spine is twisting but not schlumping. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, abdomen in, look over right shoulder, twist. Good, slowly, carefully unwind, take your time, no rush. Inhale, reach your left arm up, stretch left side body. Exhale, place left hand close behind you, fingers tinted, thumb pointing towards you, fingers pointing away from you. Inhale, reach right arm up, stretch right side body. Exhale, place right hand on left knee, again, using the breath to move the body. Inhale, stretch up, eyes open. Exhale, look over left shoulder twist. Notice if you're leaning to the left, evenly distribute your body weight on both sit bones. Look over your left shoulder where eyes go, body nose to follow, inhale, stretch up. Exhale, look over left shoulder, twist. Good, and slowly, carefully unwind. We're gonna do some seated cat cows. Place your hands on your knees. I'm gonna show you from the side and Molly will show you from the front. So we're gonna articulate our spine, right? Moving the spine back and forward. Inhale, stretch the crown of your head up towards the ceiling. Exhale, cat pose, round your spine, drop your head, chin to chest. Shoulders out of the ears, move your hips towards your ribs, ribs towards your hips, belly button, middle spine to the wall behind you, drop your head, relax your jaw. This is cat pose, we're rounding our spine like an angry cat, meow. Let's move into cow pose. Inhale, look forward, stick your butt out, look up towards the ceiling, squeeze shoulders together, roll the shoulders back and down. We're letting our abdomens relax, sort of like if you see a cow by the side of the road, how their tummies hang out. That's what we're doing here. Cow pose, move. Exhale, pull your abdomen in, drop your head, chin to chest, round your spine. So it's compression to the front of the body, extension to the back of the body. Cow pose, extension to the front of the body, compression to the spine. Move your tailbone back, shoulders back and down, open through your heart space. Look up and look back, chin away from the chest. We'll do one more cat pose. Slide the shoulder blade scapula apart, chin to chest, draw relax, tuck your tailbone under, drop your head, round your spine, and cow pose. Squeeze shoulder blade scapula together like you have a walnut in between your shoulders and you're trying to crack it. Open through your heart space, look up, move your tailbone back. Good, and then slowly come back into a neutral position. We're gonna move the spine in circles. So you're just gonna keep your hands on your knees and make circles going clockwise a couple times. Again, just getting some motion in the body and then counterclockwise. Okay, good. And when you're ready, come back into a neutral position. So you're welcome to repeat the seated cat cows, or you can join me in tabletop for another round of cat cows. I'm going to show you from the side and Molly can show you from the, <laughs> from the front or yeah, you can do from the side too. 
Okay, so we're gonna find a moment here in our tabletop position. Take a moment to get your knees under your hips, your wrists under your shoulders. And sometimes when I'm in tabletop, I let my shoulders hunch up. If you were like me, right, you tend to let the shoulders hunch. Take a moment here, bend the elbows out to the side and then push the um, palms into the floor to lengthen through the shoulder blades. So we're gonna do our cat cows again. Take an inhale through your nose. Exhale, drop your head, round your spine up towards the ceiling like an angry cat. Tuck your tailbone under, pull your abdomen in, relax your head. Shoulders out of the ears. Cow pose, move, drop your belly down. Inhale, look up, stick your butt up, look up towards the ceiling, squeeze shoulders together, keep the shoulders out of the ears. Twice more, exhale, round your spine, cat pose, meow, chin to chest. Cow pose, moo, chest forward, belly down, hips up, shoulders away from the ears, look up. Cat pose, rounding the spine, stretching shoulder blades, scapula apart, squeezing the abdominal wall in. And cow pose. Squeezing the shoulder blade scapula, compression to the spine, opening through the heart space, opening through the abdomen. Good, and then come back into a neutral position. We're gonna do what's called thread the needle and I will give you an alternative if thread the needle does not work for you. Keep your left hand on the floor. Inhale, reach your right arm up, look up towards the ceiling. Nice little spine twist here, enjoy. Exhale, take right hand in between the arms. Option to have your right ear on the floor. Good, with your hand close to your face. Can also lift your left arm up to the ceiling and drape behind you for a bind. Now, if being on your shoulder like this is too intense for the shoulder, you can come into a seated position, take your right arm long beside you, bend your left arm up and drop the right shoulder down. You get the same deltoid shoulder stretch without putting weight on the shoulder. Wherever you are is perfect. Let's take a breath here. Inhale to your nose. Exhale to your nose. Breathe in and breathe out. If you have your left hand draped behind you in a bind, reach it up to the ceiling, place your left hand close to your face, everybody together, inhale, unthread the needle, reach your right arm up, look up. Exhale, place right hand on the floor. Other side, inhale, reach your left arm up, look up, nice stretch, enjoy. Exhale, thread the needle, bring your left hand through the arms, Option to keep your right hand on the floor or reach it up towards the ceiling and wrap behind you for a bind. Try to keep your feet knee width distance. Hips over knees, left shoulder to the floor. And again, if this does not feel right for your body, you can come into a seated position, take your left arm across your side body, bend your right arm up, and now you have that same stretch without putting weight on the shoulder. Use your breath to connect to your body. Inhale through your nose. And slowly exhale through your nose. If you have your right hand draped behind you in a bind, reach it up and then place your right hand on the floor close to your head. Everybody together, inhale, unthread the needle, reach your left arm up. Exhale, left hand down to the floor. Good, and we're gonna take a child's pose, sink your hips down and reach your arms forward, beautiful. It's a great way to stretch out the back, the hips, the shoulders, never going to a point of pain. Take an inhale through your nose, reach the arms a little forward. Exhale through the nose, sink the hips down. Let's hold here for five more breaths. Just enjoying this grounding posture. Child's pose is really wonderful. If you're ever feeling a little untethered or out of sorts or anxious, you can always just drop to the floor and do a nice child's pose at any point in the day, right? And it really helps me to calm down and to reconnect. Again, inhale through your nose. And then exhale through your nose. As you're ready, you're gonna walk your hands in towards you, slowly press yourself up, there's no rush. And we did a lot of walking today, so we're gonna do a toe stretch, sorry. So for the toe stretch, you're gonna come back into your tabletop position, tuck your toes under, bring your heels together, open your knees a little wider. I'll show you from the front. 
as well. Option to stay here or as you're ready, slowly walk your hands back and eventually sink your hips down towards your heels. Doesn't have to be today or tomorrow. And from here, you can bring your hands together if you can sit all the way back. So this toe stretch is not comfortable for probably, I don't think I've ever met anyone for whom this is comfortable for, to be honest with you, but it's really healthy to stretch through the toes. And if you do it like, you know, once a day for a minute, that adds up over time. Sometimes when we think about yoga, we think about like cat cow, or maybe like balancing on a leg or an arm, but you know, yoga really does work every part of the body. There's a, just about a posture for every single, you know, joint and bone and tendon and ligament. And sometimes we forget about the toes. So doing a little toe stretch right here is a really nice way to uh, work out the toe joints. Take an inhale through your nose, exhale through your nose, and then come forward back onto all fours. And here's the fun part. You can tap out your toes, which I know my downstairs neighbor loves. Sorry, Marlene. Okay, good. We're gonna turn, lie on your back for our first Savasana or puddle pose of the day. I'll show you in one moment. Great. So you can lie on your back and open your arms and legs. If lying on your back with your legs long does not feel good for your lower back, know that you are welcome to place a small blanket or pillow under your lower back, or you can bend your legs so that your feet are on the floor and your knees rest together. Either way. So in the beginning of class, we were really working on, you know, waking up the spine, moving the body, working through like our wrists and our toes and our shoulders. And now we just get to take a moment just to enjoy the floor and let the floor hold you up. So sometimes, you know, I find it very interesting how different uh, people's perception of yoga is. I know some people whose perception of yoga is like, it's all power vinyasa, bah. and I know other people whose perception of yoga is, it's just savasana, right? It's just this. And um, again, there's so many different postures and styles of yoga and restorative, we're being gentle with ourselves. And we start out the class with some um, shorter postures, right? Some cat cows, some movement to the neck and the spine. But now for the rest of class, we're gonna do more traditional restorative yoga postures which are more long held and more supported. So um, for the rest of class, we will be using some, well, occasionally we'll be using some um, pillows and blankets. So if you don't have pillows or blankets nearby, now is a great time if you want to like slowly and carefully sit up and grab some pillows and blankets, um, you can do so. Please make sure that if you do need to stand up to grab some props um, that you're getting up slowly because we have been on the floor for a while. So. Keep that in mind. Otherwise, just enjoying the savasana for another few moments. A lot of yoga classes will use like fancy props like yoga blocks and bolsters and stuff like that. But I found you can pretty much substitute all of those fancy props with household items like blankets and, and pillows and stuff like that. So that's what we'll be using today, just household items. Okay, as you're ready, you're gonna bend your knees so your feet are on the floor if they're not already. Roll off to one side, put your hands on the floor, slowly press yourself up and go ahead and grab, um, you want like two big pillows that you could lean on. So we're gonna put these pillows in front of us like this. And then you can grab either a smaller pillow or a blanket or a couple blankets and put that in front of you like so. So the idea is we're gonna rest our abdomen on the bigger pillows, and then we're gonna have a smaller pillow or blanket to rest our head on. Okay, great. So we're gonna start, um, you're gonna, this is gonna be fun with you. You're gonna come so that you're sitting, I don't know what this is, perpendicular to your, you're sitting adjacent to your pillows, okay? You're facing one way, your pillows are facing forward, you're facing to the other side. There we go, words are hard. From here, you're gonna to start to come onto your side, like you're a side sleeper. You're gonna bring your, um, pardon me, you're gonna bring your left arm, if you're on your left side, left arm out to the right, and then right arm long overhead. 
So the idea here is you want some sort of support under your head. So already I'm noticing this blanket is not high enough for my head. Take your time if you need to get more pillows, more blankets. But the idea is you have a little bit of a side stretch using the pillows. So you're really stretching the right side body. Your head is supported. If you're lying on your left side, your left arm is out to the right and then take your right arm long overhead and now you'll feel this nice stretch to the right side body. Gentle compression to the left side body. You can keep both of your knees bent, right knee on top of left knee, right foot on top of right foot. And this is it. We're gonna hold here for five minutes and breathe. So this is kind of where we get into like really uh, like restorative yoga, right? The idea is that you're restoring some peace, some relaxation. It's not meant to be um, like cardiovascular or intensive, but I often think for that reason, more gentle styles of yoga are actually more um, psychologically challenging, especially if you're one of those people that pushes yourself or is always like, I'm not sure if I'm doing enough. This can be way more challenging than in more like boot camp style types of yoga where people are, you know, always telling you to push, 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 right? Sometimes easing up from the need to do more or to perform in any way, sometimes that's the hardest part of our yoga class. Right away, if how uh, you are seated or lying does not feel right for your body, feel free to grab more props or switch up what you're doing. Again, you just want a gentle stretch to the right side body, but not a point of pain or a point where you're like gritting your teeth or holding your breath or having to think about something else to remain here, right? You want to just be at a place where you get a nice stretch. And you're just going to use the pillows and the floor to hold you up. And give us three minutes just to enjoy. Take some time here for yourself. And if you start to nod off, that is wonderful. Notice where you might be holding on to tension in your body. Let it go through the exhale breath. Notice where your mind might wander to in moments of stillness or solitude. And if you notice that your mind is wandering somewhere unhelpful, whether it's negative self-talk or just you know, something not pertaining to the present moment. This is a wonderful opportunity to practice being compassionate with yourself and practice returning to your breath and returning to your body. Um, and for me, at least, this is something that I have to practice. I'm not naturally good at it. I'm not naturally good at being still. We're kind of letting go of the day and really just going inward. That's why I love the word practice, right? We practice yoga. It's not like we're ever doing it. It's not a destination that we arrive at. It's just an opportunity to practice reconnecting to our body, reconnecting to our breath. And when we notice that maybe the mind wanders or the body is tensing up or we're holding tension somewhere, it's just an invitation to practice letting that go. Take an inhale through your nose and an exhale through your nose. 
we're going to transition into a uh, belly spine twist. So if you have your right arm long overhead, take your time, slowly bring your right arm down towards your side. If your left arm is out to the left, slowly bring your left hand in. From here, you're gonna start to roll onto your abdomen. So your hip, left hip stays on the floor, but you're rolling onto your abdomen. You can have your elbows out to the side, you've got it. And then option to look down, or I'm gonna keep looking to the right. So left ear on your mat, but you're rolling your abdomen down towards the floor. This is a seated belly, or I should say a lying down, a supine belly spine twist. If lying on your stomach twisting like this does not feel good, you are always welcome to lie on your back and do a spine twist that way. Most spine twists we do either standing, seated, or on our backs. This is a nice alternative where you're using pillows so that you're not putting too much pressure on your abdomen, but you still get a nice um, spine and abdomen twist. I watched, I didn't watch the whole thing, but I did, I watched a restorative yoga class on YouTube today where they held this posture for 20 minutes on each side. And I was like, whoa, maybe one day. But just to give you an idea, right, of in the restorative yoga community, it's very much like you can hold this posture for 20 minutes, right? And you just get a gentle stretch. We're only going to hold it for five minutes and we're already one and a half minutes in. How you're lying does not feel good. You are welcome to switch up what you're doing, right? You can always be on your back instead of your abdomen. You can also um, add or remove blankets or pillows. So again, if what you're doing is not feeling good, you can switch it up. Otherwise, start to focus in on your breath. Feel your back move with the inhale and exhale. With every exhale, see if body can get just a little heavier. Relaxing into your pillows, relaxing into the ground, let the ground hold you up. You notice your mind wandering, just gently return your mind back towards your breath, back to the body, back to the truth of the present moment, holding here for one more minute. Take an inhale through your nose and then exhale through your nose, letting go of any lingering tension in the body, just melting into the posture.
As you're ready, you're gonna lift your head and look forward, place your hands on the floor and slowly, carefully press yourself up. There's no rush. You're gonna bring your pillows and blankets out to the side and then turn, lie on your back or Savasana. So we were on our side and then we um, stretched through the shoulder and then twisted for the, through the spine and the chest and the abdomen, right? We use those props for a full 10 minutes. So now we're just letting everything relax down onto the floor. You might notice a shift in circulation or blood flow from the head to the toes. You might notice even like a change in temperature in your body. You could notice something not just physical, but maybe something psychological, emotional, or even a spiritual shift as you return to a neutral position, or you could feel nothing at all. And that's really valid too. I think sometimes we think like we're supposed to feel a lot in yoga postures and that's not necessarily true. Sometimes a little bit goes a long way. Take an inhale through your nose, feel your chest rise. Exhale through your nose, feel your chest fall. As you're ready, you're going to bend your legs so your feet are on the floor if they're not there already and roll <coughs> off to one side. Take your time, press yourself up, and we're going to do the other side of those um, nice restorative yoga postures. So finding your pillows and blankets. And again, this side might feel different. So just preparing yourself for that. Okay, so if your pillows and blankets are facing the wall in front of you, you're going to turn to one side, good, sit up really close to the blankets, and then you're going to slowly slide your body down. So if you're on your right side, right arm goes to the left side of the room, and then left arm long overhead. And we're going to hold here for five minutes, and again, just take a moment here finding um, a set of props that works for you. And if how you're lying already does not feel sustainable, you can always grab different props or remove a pillow or blanket or switch how you're lying. And the general idea is you're stretching the left side of your body all the way through the shoulder and arm, opening through the chest. Notice maybe where the mind has wandered. Notice where you might still be carrying tension. And sometimes there's a connection between where our mind wanders and where we hold tension in our body, right? So your mind maybe wanders to like something you have to do after class or something that, you know, unpleasant that happened earlier today. You might find that your shoulders are a little tense. See if you can relax through your abdomen, your pelvic floor, your toes, relaxing through your fingertips, let your hands be heavy. We'll just enjoy three more minutes here, breathing in and out.
there one more part of your body that you can relax? One more thought you can let go of. It's not a destination where all of a sudden our mind is clear and we're totally relaxed. It's just a constant invitation to return to the breath and return to the body. Take a slow inhale through your nose. And then easy exhale through your nose. If you have your left arm long overhead, start to bring your left hand um, down close to your face or yep, side body and then close to face good. And then almost like unthread the needle, right? You're gonna bring your Right elbow out to the right, left elbow out to the left, going back into that belly twist. And again, if you need to adjust how you're sitting, go for it. So chest down towards your mat, towards your pillow. I'm gonna keep my elbows bent, look to the right, enjoy this side for five minutes. So spine twists are um, really key to back health. And, you know, if you sit at a desk all day, you've probably figured out by now that it feels good from time to time to like stand up and put your hands on your back and do a back bend, right? We know that in a world where we hunch over, it's important to back bend. But it's also really important to spine twist and sometimes can almost feel like a chiropractic adjustment if you like twist your spine real quick. But there's also um, real therapeutic value to doing a gentle, easy spine twist like this and holding it for longer, but not like pushing as far, right? So you're not pushing yourself into the like deepest twist of all time. You're just letting your left shoulder relax down, right shoulder relax down while keeping your right hip on the floor. And not only are spine twists good for um, back health, but they're also good for digestion, right? Because you're twisting your abdomen a little bit here. So if you ever have a stomach ache, you know, you do a couple spine twists and that can help relieve like any bloating or pain there. about halfway through the posture. If you need to change what you're doing or grab a pillow, you're welcome to. And then just notice where you might still be holding on to tension and see if you can melt into the posture just a little bit more. So you're not pushing or forcing yourself, right? You're just relaxing into the posture.
Take a slow inhale through your nose. Feel the backs of your ribs expand. Slow exhale through your nose. Feel the skin across your back gently contract with the breath out. As you're ready, you're gonna look forward, place your hands on the floor, slowly press yourself up. There's no rush. You can bring your pillows and blankets back out. Turn around back into your savasana. Just coming back into this nice neutral position. And again, just taking stock of how it feels to kind of stretch out. Feel your abdomen rise and fall with your breath. Just allow the back of your body to sink a little bit deeper into the floor. <clears throat> Let the floor hold you up. Gonna bend your knees so your feet are on the floor. Roll off to one side, take your time, place your hands on the floor and slowly press yourself up. Come to a seated position with your butt on the floor and your legs in front of you. And once again, we're gonna use our pillows for a, um, a propped up forward fold that's gonna gently stretch the backs of our legs and our spine. So you can put as many blankets and pillows as you want on your thighs. Make it as big as possible, as big as you want, as big as feels good. And then you're just gonna fold forward and drop your head. So I'm gonna show you from the side, perfect. So cute, perfect, okay. And you just fold forward like this. Let your hands go like a zombie. And we're gonna hold here for three minutes. You need to grab more props or remove some pillows or blankets, feel free. Otherwise, you just want to get a nice stretch through your back and a gentle stretch through the hamstrings. So, you know, you could do this without props and fold forward all the way, and then you would like really feel it in the backs of the legs, right? But here in this restorative um, posture, especially when we're holding it for three minutes, it's just a way to very subtly stretch the body. And at the same forward fold, at the same time, forward folds like this are really calming, cooling. This is another version of a posture, you know, that you can do if you're feeling a little untethered or anxious, any sort of forward fold like this, or again, a child's pose are really wonderful restorative postures that you can do on days when you don't have time for like a full hour long class. about one minute left. Notice where you might be holding tension in the body and just let it go through the exhale breath. So 
sometimes I surprise myself with where I find tension. You know, a lot of times we think about the big areas like the shoulders or the jaw. But also notice if you're holding tension in like the arches of your feet. Maybe in your chin or your middle back. And just let, letting go there as well. Take an inhale through your nose and then exhale through your nose. Slowly press yourself up, take your time. Good, we're gonna come back into our Savasana. I know lots of like pillows, no pillows, pillows, no pillows. I would say I like to keep you on your toes, but really I just like to keep us on the floor. <laughs> okay, close your eyes back into your Savasana. Let your hands and feet be heavy. And again, just noticing and appreciating how your body moves with your breath. So using our pillows, our blankets, our props, right? We you know, stretch the side of the body and then we twisted the spine and then we did a forward fold. So our last propped posture of the day, our last posture of the day will be a back bend using the same pillows and blankets that we've uh, used throughout class. So as you're ready, bend your legs again, feet on the floor, roll off to one side, slowly press yourself up. And she already knows what to do. You're gonna basically, same thing, put a couple of pillows right behind your butt, like you're gonna lay like this, and then you want a pillow or a blanket for your head. So same idea that um, your middle back is really gonna be bending and the heart space is opening up, but then your head will have something to rest on as well so that your head's not laying like all the way back. And you might need to experiment for a bit with figuring out how many pillows you want under your back versus under your head. Awesome. And then if you'd like, you can either have your arms out to the side, like big expansive arms, or you can bend your elbows. Um, so your arms are cactus, like goalposts. Perfect. Let your hands and feet be heavy. We're just going to hold here for three more minutes. This is a big heart opener and it should be gentle healing compression to the spine. So if already you're noticing that your back bend is like too much, you can remove a pillow from underneath the um, middle back or you can always, you know, add a pillow to under your head or whatever that is. Back bends can often release some emotion or tension in the body. So if in this posture or like another back bend that you do in a yoga class ever makes you um, like a little bit weepy, like you want to cry or you want to giggle or you just have some sort of like kind of strange um, emotional reaction to it, just know that that's normal. And also if you've never experienced any of that, that's also normal. But sometimes I'll have people that come up to me after class and they're like, why do I cry in camel pose? And I'm like, ah. It's just a release, right? Just a release of some tension, some emotion. I used to have a yoga teacher who would say, leave your issues in your tissues, right? By the side of your mat. If you ever do feel a surge of emotion, be it joy or anger or fear or sadness or giddiness, or even just like deep peace and calm. This is a really wonderful opportunity and a safe space to experience those um, things without like the judgment of others and more importantly, without the judgment of yourself. So we're practicing compassion, we're practicing non-judgment, non-attachment, just being an observer of the body, compassionate observer like you would a dear friend, but not placing judgment or blame for whatever does come up. In the last minute of this posture, notice where you might be holding onto some tension just let it go with the exhale breath. Breathing in. 
and emptying out. Take an inhale through your nose. And then exhale through your nose. There's a couple different ways to come out of this. If it feels good for you, you can just put your hands on the floor and press yourself up. Um, you can also bend your legs so that your feet are on the floor. Lift your hips up, remove one pillow. Lift your hips up again, remove the other pillow and then find your way into your final savasana. So if you want, you can keep a pillow underneath your head. You can also place a pillow like under um, your legs or anything like that that feels good. You can open your arms and legs. And just appreciating, noticing any shifts as you release from that back bend, especially a long held back bend. So for example, I feel like a change in temperature in my feet right now. My heart rate is slightly elevated from that extension through the heart space. So now we're just coming back into a neutral position. Relax your forehead. Relax your forehead. Relax your forehead. Soften through your jaw and throat. Let your shoulders be heavy on the floor. Relax your hands. Relax your hands. Relax your hands. Let go of any tension that you're carrying in your abdomen. Soften through your hips and seat. Relaxing through the legs. Relax your feet. Relax your feet. Relax your feet. You can take a moment to scan the body for any lingering tension. Scanning the heart space for any lingering cares and worries. And this is an invitation just to let all of that go. Doesn't have to be forever, but just for a few breaths here, anything heavy that you're carrying, any space that you're still holding on to, this is an invitation just to let it go for a breath or two, allowing the floor beneath you to support you as you practice accepting whatever support you need outside of yoga as well. Breathing in, and letting it all go through the exhale breath. What do we practice yoga for, if not this moment right here? Inhale through the nose, belly rise. Exhale through the nose, belly fall. Slow breath in. Easy breath out. and all is coming. You are welcome to stay in your final Savasana for as long as you'd like. Thank you for joining Molly and Holly for yoga and I hope to see you all soon. Bye.